when I first drove it, it was kind of like relearning a little bit because um, everything is just so different in the, in the electric bus. Um, you're so used to listening for sounds in a diesel bus for anything going wrong and in an electric bus you, you just don't hear that. I think with um, when I first drove it, I was amazed on how smooth it felt. Like with the diesel, it's kind of more like the rough going, but the electric bus was just nice and smooth, quiet, and um, I, I enjoyed driving it. Most of the kids, they really enjoy and are excited that they get to ride an electric bus. Yes, it, the, the aisle is wider to get down. The seats are, are got more room in there for them. We have one student that is very sensitive to um, noise, and she seems to have been doing very well on the bus without so with more quiet environment for her. So the Three Rivers Community School Districts, we serve about 2,700 students. Um, our utilization of the Lion uh, buses is to serve predominantly um, the inner schools, inner city schools. Um, due to the fact that it has the greatest impact on the overall benefits of utilizing uh, electric buses over uh, diesel buses. Yeah, we actually also utilize the line buses for um, some of our, what I call, localized field trips or to service our other schools that are on the outskirts of our district. Um, the capacity and capability of the buses is more than able to achieve that. Um, but again, our intent was to uh, bring the greatest impact, benefit impact, to the community. And so, majority of our uh, city routes, there's a lot of idle time, a lot of uh, just operational time. So to, to reduce the carbon footprint and the uh, emissions and whatnot in a localized area, that's how we leverage it that way. When I accepted the position that I'm currently in, we had 32 routes. We had 34 buses. Out of those 34, 60% of our buses were aging, and when I say aging, 10 years to 12 years, operating on over 8,000 hours of runtime, and many of them were 125 plus thousand miles. So um, no, knowing that, uh, we began to look into what would our next move be if we began looking at a long-term say even a 12-year replacement plan. We had the opportunity, uh, sort of a, hey, what do you think about this moment? About electric school buses. Well, that really piqued my curiosity. And I thought, well, let's, let's learn some more. And the more we learned about school bus electrification, we thought, this is, this is, this is where we need to focus our attention. This is where we're gonna have the biggest impact. So what I began to do is do my homework. I went out and seen what Massachusetts had done. I seen what Vermont had done, what New York had done. So I began to look and see what those groups had done and studied what they did with their power companies, studied how they were using them. And that's where I began to take my plan. We knew that there were going to be funds available, and what would we be able to capture uh, from those funds? Well, when we started, it was like, I'm going to ask for one bus. I piqued some interest, let's ask for two, because I would rather take one yes than one no. And I was blessed that they were on board for the two buses, which thrilled me. I was thrilled. Um, what happened is, we were really on the fence and getting down to the wire on if we were going to be able to participate. And our facilities director, Brian Leonard, was with me and championing, and he said, look, he said, this is our one shot. If we miss this, it may never happen again. And it was, it was his, his tilt that helped finish bringing everybody on board. Um, and they, they're very interested in knowing what's going on with our EV buses three years later. Um, you know, what, are, what are those new electric buses doing? 
Uh, our buses have 30,000 miles on them. Uh, we have saved the district approximately $38,000 in diesel fuel, as to oppose what our electrification is. Uh, I monitor that. Uh, we were fortunate enough that with the partnership of our power company, which is key to any transition project, uh, we were able to negotiate uh, a tariff rate. And when we charged, uh, so we, we're seeing some huge savings. Our buses charge for about three hours a night, four hours a night, and that will give us a full charge for the next morning. And they run in about, they'll come back at about 80% uh, on a 55, 60 mile run for the day. Uh, another significant savings we're seeing is maintenance and repair. You could wear your baby blue leisure suit and work on these buses as opposed to uh, working on an internal combustion engine bus. Our board has recognized the significant savings. Maintenance as far as the body. You know, our buses have uh, the lower panels are fiberglass. Being uh, living above the I-90 corridor, we are we have a lot of salt, salt issues, road deterioration issues, um, and our, our buses, we don't, our electric buses, we don't have to worry about our stel stairwells rotting out or um, side panels or floors rusting out. So there's significant savings there. And um, our board is now eager to find out when we're gonna be able to add more electric buses to our fleet.